alternative to uh, MySQL Workbench, you can download a number of other um, similar uh, software, similar IDEs. I'm going to download a very generic one that can be used with many databases called Squirrel SQL. So to install Squirrel SQL, the first thing that you want to do is to go to www.squirrelsql.org, click on download and installation, and select the one that's appropriate for your operating system. In my case, it's Mac OS X. That takes me to this website, SourceForge, which is a repository of software. And then it will start downloading by itself, and then I hit OK, and it will download. I've done this already. Now, and I've saved it into my downloads files. Now, the other thing that I need to point out is that because this is a generic tool, it doesn't know whether you have MySQL, whether you have Oracle, or what you have. So you have to download what's called a driver, something that will allow uh, Squirrel SQL to connect to MySQL. And for that, you go to https www.mysql.com forward slash products forward slash connector and go and download the JDBC connector. Okay, so you will click download, then you select the file that you want to download. In this case, you can download this zip archive, the platform independent zip archive, and uh, it'll take you to a login page, but you don't really need to log in. Just say no thanks, start my download. And it will start your download. Make sure you save this file in a sensible place that you can reuse. So don't just leave it in the downloads directory. All right, now you have downloaded both uh, Squirrel SQL and the MySQL connector. So now the installation process for um, MySQL SQL is, is very uh, simple. It's here, that's my downloads directory. I just double click on it and it will take you through an installation process. Just accept all the defaults and you should be uh, good to go, okay? The installation looks looks a little bit like this. Welcome to installation. You say next, next. It's a very typical one. Accept the, the default directory. You say next. And then because I already have it installed, then it's telling me this. So uh, this will, I'm going to cancel this installation. You shouldn't do this. But I'm doing this because I already have it installed. But when it's installed, it'll appear in your applications or programs directory right here. It's a little, uh, okay, so now you double click on it and it will start the program. The program starts in a little window, it looks like this, right? But you can always make it bigger, that's fine. So what we need to do now is first tell, um, tell Squirrel SQL that we have a driver for MySQL, that we have a way to connect to MySQL. So click on drivers. Look for MySQL driver. You will see an X next to it. And then what you will do is, uh, is go and add an extra class path. So you go to extra class path. I'm going to delete the one that I have right now, just so you can see. I'm going to add a class path. Basically, I'm going to tell it, hey, here's where MySQL driver is. So I go to where I have it. I saved it. In a sensible place called databases test code and then here's the zip file I decompressed it into this directory and I'm going to tell it that and then you point to the mysql connector jar file that is what um, uh, squirrel SQL needs to connect to your mysql database so you choose that and here in the class name if it's not Already there, you say com.mysql.jdbc.driver with the capital D. Okay. Now, uh, so that is that is uh, that's that. Now, in my example URL, you might see a bunch of things. What you really need to do is to do jdbc colon mysql colon slash slash localhost colon thirty three oh six, which is the port in which this runs. And then just say OK. So we've uh, set the driver. Now what we need to do is to actually create a connection to our uh, database engine. So you go to aliases here, aliases, and create a new one. 
we're going to name this local connection. Now, the driver that I'm going to use is my SQL driver, and you will see actually a little check mark next to it. I don't have any of the other drivers. A little check mark. This is my URL. Just recheck it. Your username. I have not changed my username since the installation, so it's still root. And the password, uh, it was given to me, and then I changed it. So I just put my password, the, the current password for my database. You can select to log on automatically or connect to startup. And um, then we want to test this connection, so we test it. It basically confirms that you want to connect, and you connect. It says connecting, and then it says connection successful. Some common mistakes are you might have forgotten a sl uh, slash, you didn't put a colon here. Those are common mistakes that will uh, not let you connect. Or when you install the driver, you put the wrong class, like you forgot a dot or there's a typo. But anyway, so I just say OK. And then uh, close. Now I have my connection. OK, so the next time you start, this is what's going to come up. But then you go to aliases, and here in Connect2, you can say local connection. It will bring up this window, this little thing, and now you're connected to this. Now, here's what you can do. You can browse objects with the Objects tab. Here's your local connection, and I have a few databases of my own in there, right? And, for example, I'm going to use JDO database. If you're... Um, it's a good idea to have like your test stuff in, in a database that has your first initial and then you know last name underscore and then DB or something but a database that you know that it's for testing if I expand it I know the things that are there um, now I can also in Joe uh, DB I can also uh, do some SQL commands and in the SQL command, first you want to select the catalog. The catalog is going to be Joe, uh, JDODB. Again, if I go to objects now with JDODB in the catalog, I can see more of JDODB. For example, the employee table. I can see what it's like, um, uh, some, some of its things, you know, some of its properties. I can see the contents. I have some, some records in there. Uh, what's the primary key? I can I can see a lot of things, but the, with the SQL tab, I can select. I can I can write SQL. So for example, select everything from, oops, employee, and then once I'm done writing my SQL, I hit run, and then here I can see the results from it. Okay, if I create if I write a lot of SQL here and I want to save this, I can just go to file. You, you don't see this, uh, you don't see this, but um, if I just want to save the script, I can I can go here, right? So save the contents of the editor, and it'll ask me where to save it. And a good idea is to save it with an extension of .sql. So this is a very fast introduction to Squirrel SQL in case you don't want to use the uh, default MySQL workbench.